I wanted to include just a couple of kind of real world examples of using significant figures in calculations. So I just picked this one out from your lab and we're just gonna kind of go through uh, the types of things you wanna consider when you're actually going through this calculation. First of all, you look at what kind of operations are being performed um, and the good news is it's only multiplication and division and that's actually a lot easier to, uh, to, to deal with than, uh, than addition and subtraction. Uh, so anything that I multiply and or divide, you just have to remember that you go with the least number of significant figures and that's the number that you're gonna round to. So let me show you how I do that. Um, it may help to have a, a obviously a calculator. I'm gonna post uh, a, uh, especially at the beginning of next week, uh, a kind of a free online scientific calculator. So if you don't wanna have to go out and buy one or don't have one, don't worry about it too much. You can also use your phone, but it is kind of a pain. So anyway, um, let's take a look. Okay, so I did these two numbers multiplied together and let me show you what I'm gonna write down. So what my calculator gave me, and I haven't divided anything yet, what my calculator gave me, I'll just say it out loud, is 8.70272. But I know for a fact that those are too many numbers uh, for the number that I'm allowed here, which is actually only gonna be three sig figs. So what I'm gonna do, watch what I do, this is 8.70 and I'm gonna underline the two. Okay, so that's the result of that calculation. You'll notice that I took what was in the calculator and, and I hacked off everything past this two. And you'll notice I also put an underline underneath that too. What that reminds me is that that is actually an insignificant number that I, if I had to stop there, I couldn't include it, right? But it also helps with some of the silly rounding errors. Um, sometimes if you hack off all the significant figures, uh, it, uh, or I should say if you if you hack them off like right at your proper number of significant figures you can end up with uh, rounding errors and a way to avoid that is if you are gonna uh, write something down to then use later to calculate you just do one additional you can do two if you're or two extra if you're really concerned about it um, uh, or quite honestly today's calculators can remember any number um, so it's kind of a silly thing but I always just kind of out of habit will include one additional so the two numbers that I am going to divide are these two the good news is it's on my calculator so it already kind of includes all of these digits so if you do this for yourself uh, and you actually write this number down and then do a division, don't be surprised if your value is just a little bit different than mine in terms of the, the numbers that we're writing down. But the fact is, is that both of us, or we all should end up with the same uh, properly reported value. Okay, so let's write it up here because I don't think you can see it if I write it any lower. So the number that my calculator popped out at me is 4.3. Three, seven, nine, eight, yada, 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 yada. Okay, let's just draw, throw a whole bunch of numbers in there. I look at this and I say, okay, I've got three significant figures divided by four significant figures, so I'm only allowed to include three. So what I do is I underline those two that I, that I wrote down, and now I'm gonna round, now that I'm ready to report my value, I'm gonna round this one up, right, because this is greater than five. So my properly reported calculation is going to be 4.38 for that particular one. Um, one of the things we're gonna start to learn when we uh, do any kind of math is to always do a sniff test. So I just kind of look through and I say, does that kind of make sense? It's basically eight divided by two, and yeah, it should be four, this or that. So uh, that value sniffs right, and in terms of the significant figures, I noticed that I got four times a three divided by a four, so it makes sense that in fact I report three significant figures. So that's one of the ways that we can do uh, significant figures in calculations. All right, this next one uh, is a spicier meatball than the last one. What it's gonna require us to do is a whole bunch of calculating and also a little bit of algebraic manipulation. So I'll kind of show you how to do this, uh, both practicing sig figs and also practicing a little bit with uh, algebra. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is pretty much what I did last time. I'm just going to multiply these two numbers together and those two numbers together so that I end up with an expression. So hold the phone. Okay, so this particular part shouldn't be too surprising to you. I multiplied these two numbers together and I know that a 5 sig figs times a 4 sig figs gets me to 4 sig figs and that's what I did and I underlined that uh, non-significant figure right there. Did the same thing over here. A 5 times a 3 uh, sig fig count gets me to 3 sig figs and so I end up with that value. Now the question is how do I get t alone? Uh, and this is one of those places where it's really good to remember that we can cross multiply these numbers and end up with a new expression which I'll write for you in just a second. Okay so I just showed the results of that cross multiplication there. Oops, I forgot to underline this and that's it. Okay, so now we're going to go through and treat this thing just like uh, we would before. What I'm going to do, and I can just combine steps. I'm going to divide both sides by that, that number in order to get these guys to go away. And so what I end up with is I've crossed out those two. I shouldn't end up with t alone. So t, t equals whatever the result of this expression is. And I'll show you how to treat the sig figs there. Okay, so my calculator threw a bunch of numbers at me and I just wrote down a couple of them because I noticed that this guy only has three significant figures, which means that those other numbers and everything past it are insignificant. I'm going to round my value to 229, and I don't think there are any units on there, but I don't remember. <laughs> uh, oh, it's probably a temperature in Kelvin. What do you want to bet? No, no units. So there's our final answer right there. So hopefully that helped uh, you guys to figure out how to do the most common kind of calculation in chemistry, which involves divisions and um, multiplications and how to treat sig figs as well. Um, the very next one we're going to do is just a, an addition subtraction one. These things are a little bit tougher to take uh, in terms of sig figs, but quite honestly, it's a pretty rare thing that we're going to have to do. But I'll do one example. Okay, so what we have here is uh, 3.6c, which is a, obviously an addition and or subtraction here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to line everything up. So we'll do the addition first. And so one of the things that is true is that when we line this thing up, you'll notice that that zero is actually insignificant, right? And so that means that whatever value we end up with has to be rounded to the tenths place. Whoops, that didn't work very well rounded to the tenths place. So let's do the calculation and I'll show you uh, how that uh, result looks. Okay, so there's the result and you'll notice I had to underline that five because that's gotta be insignificant. If we were gonna stop there, and we're not gonna stop there just yet because we have to do a subtraction, is I would have to round this value, we'll just pretend we're stopping, I would round that value to that, right? It would actually be 11,310. And I know that's probably gonna make a lot of you out there angry, but luckily we don't have to stop there anyway. What we'll do is we'll continue and subtract 22.4. And of course, we're gonna to have to line it up. And obviously the last column that has significant digits is this tens column right here. So we're going to end up rounding to that digit eventually. Okay, so that's the value that I ended up with after I was all done there. And you'll notice that this column right here, the tens place is the last uh, uh, column that has all significant figures. So these two are actually insignificant. So I'm going to have to round the final value here to 11,280 
as the reported value. So that's a little bit of how you treat these uh, values um, with addition and subtraction. Not too bad. If you have any questions, talk to me on Canvas.